There are many different types of chemical reactions throughout chemistry. There are oxidation reduction reactions, precipitation reactions, and acid-base reactions. Acid-base reactions are a large class of chemical reactions that involve a single proton being moved from one compound to another. The compound that originally has that H+, that single proton is the acid, and then it leaves and goes to a base, something that accepts one of those H plus ions. And measuring the pH, or the overall concentration of H plus, or of acid, throughout a system uh, can be very important in determining not only that initial acid-base reaction, but also how that would interact with any number of chemical reactions that could be happening at the same time. pH levels or acid levels play a critical role in things like body chemistry where uh, enzymes and proteins interact depending on the pH of the environment as well as environmental concerns where the pH level of certain water systems can predict what types of other compounds could precipitate out or uh, crash out of solution and cause contamination. So measuring the pH of a system or of a sample plays a critical role in all of these things, whether it's by pH paper, a pH indicator, or a pH meter, the chemical uh, reactions of acid-base chemistry are incredibly important. This experiment focuses on acids and bases and measuring acids and bases. So an acid is something that has a proton that it can get rid of. It can remove a proton from itself. And a base is something that can take in one of these extra protons. The overall reaction for all acid-base reactions is this. H+, plus, which is the acid ion or a single proton, will react with the hydroxide ion to form water. Every acid-base reaction undergoes this base uh, basic reaction. There can be other ions involved that are around, so like hydrochloric acid would have an extra chloride, and sodium hydroxide would have an extra sodium ion around, but those don't really do anything. The specific reaction, or what's called the net ionic reaction, would be this right here, the single H plus ion reacting with the single hydroxide ion to form one water molecule. And this is, is uh, in pure water, the ratio of these concentrations of H plus and OH minus will always uh, maintain this ratio, where one divided by these concentrations multiplied together will equal one times 10 to the negative 14th, and this would be called the equilibrium constant of water. And it's this times 10 to the negative 14th where the pH scale or the measurement scale that's used to measure the level of acidity in a solution uh, is based on. The pH scale ranges on average from zero to, to 14. This is where, this is what our, that would be why the pH scale only goes up to 14 is because 
the equilibrium of water, this equilibrium reaction only goes up to times 10 to the negative 14. You can push uh, the pH scale either higher or lower depending on advanced chemistry, but for the bulk of it, a pH scale will range from 0 to 14. And to convert between pH and the concentration of H+, plus, it is the negative log of the concentration of H+. Plus. So this would be in units of molarity. And um, because it's a negative log, that means that the higher the concentration, the lower the pH number. So a low pH value is an acidic solution. A high pH value is a basic solution. And right in the middle at seven, pH of seven would be a neutral solution. And this is uh, the pH of water. If you were to measure pure water, it should give a pH of seven. Now, if you were to measure tap water or most other waters, it won't be exactly seven because there are always things dissolved in it. But if you had pure 100% water, it should be a neutral pH of uh, seven. Now, the pH scale is a logarithmic scale. And you can see here how these numbers are arranged where a pH of zero means there's a concentration of one molar. A concentration of 0.1 molar will give a pH of one. 0 0.01 molar will give a pH of two, and, and so on. This is where you can kind of get negative pHs because you can have a solution that has, that's very, very concentrated. You can have a solution that's a higher concentration than one. And so the pH value would go negative. The pH scale is used to um, kind of determine if something is acidic or basic. While the neutral point is seven, right in the middle, anything below that is acidic and anything above that is basic. But neutral, while well, exactly seven would be neutral, um, neutral solutions usually revolve around seven. So somewhere between 6.8 and 7.2 or thereabouts would be considered a neutral uh, solution, either ever so slightly acidic or ever so slightly basic, but still basically neutral um, as a whole. Now, to convert concentration to the pH, you would take the negative log of the concentration of the acid or H plus, but to convert it back from pH, you would take uh, because this is a log, uh, log scale, log base 10, the concentration of acid would be 10 raised to the power of the negative pH. And converting back and forth between concentration and pH is something that you would go through and do throughout uh, acid-base chemistry. So the pH gives you a lot of information just from that one number. And pH is that H comes from H plus. You can also have a pOH, which is the negative log of the concentration of hydroxide. Because the uh, acid base reaction is that H plus plus OH minus to give water, and that has that unique special constant um, where the pH scale goes from 0 to 14. 
the concentration of H plus and the concentration of OH minus by taking the negative log of both of them and adding them together will always equal 14. So if you have the pH from that number, you can calculate what is the concentration of acid, the specific concentration in moles per liter of acid. Then if you have the pH, you can solve for the pOH, which would just be 14 minus whatever the pH value is. And that gives you a log scale measurement of the concentration of a base. And if you have the pOH, you can then convert to the concentration in moles per liter of the base. So from one measurement, you can determine all four of these values, the pH, the pOH, the concentration of acid, and the concentration of base. These P values, pH and pOH, are just a scale. It's a way to display the concentrations of um, either the acid ion or the base ion just in a different way. That's a little more simple than doing things like one times 10 to the eighth uh, or things like that. You could just say eight. Measuring pH in a lab setting, you can do this in a number of different ways. And, but the two main groups are either chemically or electronically. So you may have seen pH indicators um, in work before. This is where you'll add some sort of a chemical, usually a liquid solution, uh, to something else and it changes color. And that color change is based on a chemical reaction that's dependent on the amount of acid in uh, in the solution. So a typical pH indicator is this, phenylphthalene. And at a low pH, which is a high concentration of acid, this is the structure. And in this structure, it has no color. It's completely colorless. It looks just like water. But at a high pH, when the solution has a low acid concentration and a high base concentration, the structure or the shape of the molecule changes as it reacts with um, there being less acid around. And when that structure changes, it now gives off a color. So using chemicals like this one, um, you can sit, tell the difference between acids and bases, but there are many types of indicators and they all change color at a slightly different point or a slightly different concentration of H+. And in chemistry, or there, so there are a lot of different indicators. They change colors all the time to tell you uh, a more honed in range of what the pH is uh, for these different uh, solutions. Another place where you have seen probably pH indicators or these chemical uh, measurements of pH is through pH paper. And what the pa pH paper is, is uh, one of these chemical indicators just absorbed into some of the paper. So that way, if you take then that dry paper and put it in a solution, there's now ions around it. And it can go through this process of either going from one color uh, to the other, and then the, the paper changes color. Now you've probably seen this before, just measuring the pH of a backyard pool. There's the pH test strips that you can dunk right into, into the water. It changes color depending on what the pH is. 
and that's from a one or more of these chemical indicators being absorbed onto the paper and then it changes color. These types of measurements are good, uh, good to get relative pH values. They're fast um, and incredibly easy just to visually see one pH versus another. A much more accurate way to measure pH is through a pH meter. And this uses electronics to convert the concentration of H plus into a pH or measure the concentration of H plus. A pH meter is usually a glass little tube with kind of a bubble at the end. And inside the glass tube is one solution with a specific concentration of acid. And when you put this into another solution, the acid ions and the different ions kind of stick to the outside of this glass bubble. And now there are ions on the outside, so H plus ions on the outside and H plus ions on the inside, and they're at a different concentration and the different concentration of those charged ions creates an electrical voltage. And the meter itself can measure the voltage and then convert that into a pH. Different pHs uh, in the outside solution will cause different voltages and the meter is, itself can determine, uh, determine that through the computing power, just converting that voltage into a pH, and you can then measure the pH that way. So this is a much more accurate way to measure the pH samples, and this would be something um, that would be used in hospital settings a lot, to where you need a, an accurate measurement of the acid level in different samples. The pH of a solution can be measured by three different methods, either pH indicator, pH paper, or by a pH meter. The solution in the beaker is a solution of sodium hydroxide. This particular pH indicator of phenolphthalein is colorless in acidic solutions and a bright pink in basic solutions. Based on the color change, this indicator can tell that the solution in the beaker is a base. However, it does not give a specific pH number to determine concentration. pH paper is a set of different pH indicators that are absorbed on paper. Similar to how you would check the pH in your home pool, a pH indicator strip is placed in the solution and then compared to the color chart to determine the pH value. By knowing the solution is basic, we can focus on only the basic half of the pH table. By comparing the different colors on the pH paper, we can determine that this pH paper indicates the pH of the solution is 12. This is the closest matched color for all four different pads on the pH paper. While the pH indicator solution can determine that the solution in the beaker is a base and the pH paper can indicate that the solution has a pH of 12, the pH meter can give a much more accurate measurement of the pH. pH meters take a few seconds or so to stabilize in the solution, but you can already see that this 
P, uh, this solution is having a pH of 12.67 or 12.68, a much more accurate reading of pH than just the whole number of 12 that was given by the pH paper. Overall, the pH meter is a much more accurate way to measure the pH of a solution out to a higher level of significance to a better precision. Another measurement in uh, acid-base chemistry would be the percent ionization. Now, You've seen in other experiments that compounds, when they dissolve in water, they break apart into their separate ions. And they'll do that up until a point. They, uh, different salts have a solubility. Once they reach that point, no more can dissolve. The same can be true with acids and bases, where there are some acids and bases where you put them in water or put them in a solution and they 100% break apart into their ions. And they would have a 100% ionization. But not everything will always fully break apart into its ions right away. And those would be called a weak acid or a weak base. So a strong acid or a strong base is something that completely 100% breaks apart into its separate ions. So these would be things like hydrochloric acid, where any solution of hydrochloric acid, there's no HCl together in that liquid. It's only H plus ions and chloride ions. A strong base would be sodium hydroxide. There are no sodium hydroxide chunks floating around in the solution. It's all broken apart into sodium ion and hydroxide ion. 100% ionization. But not every acid and base can do that. Some things only break apart or ionize to a certain extent. And these types of things would be called weak acids or weak bases. And an example of that one would be acetic acid or vinegar, where when you take pure acetic acid and dissolve that in water and mix it around with water, yes, some of it will break apart into the acid ion, H+, and the counter ion, acetate ion. But a lot of it will remain as just the whole acetic acid. And determining the percentage of that can give you um, an insight into how these types of things will react. If there's only a small amount of H+, present, then it will behave differently than if there's a very large amount of H plus present. And the pH can give this percent ionization if you have an initial concentration. So in the case of something like HCl, if you have 0 0.1 molar HCl, then you will have 0 0.1 molar H plus, and 0 0.1 molar Cl minus. But if you have 0 0.1 molar acetic acid, it will not be 0 0.1 molar H plus and acetate. It would be something much less than that. And the percent ionization is a way to uh, tell you how much that actually is. So de to determine the percent ionization, you need two numbers. You need the pH measurement of the solution, and you need 
the initial concentration. So in a lab, when you're preparing these solutions, if you prepare a solution of acetic acid, you're basing the molarity or the concentration on the acetic acid itself. But the pH is a measurement of just the H plus. So in this example, a 0 0.200 molar solution of acetic acid has a pH of 2.58. So to determine the percent ionization of that, you need to convert the pH value into the concentration of acid. And you do this by 10 to the raised to the negative pH. So 10 raised to the negative 2.58 gives a concentration of acid of 0 0.00263 molar. Now, initially, if it was 100%, the concentration of H plus would be 0.2, the same as the starting concentration of acetic acid, but it's not. So to determine the percentage of that or the percent ionization, it's the concentration of H plus, which is measured by pH, divided by that concentration of initial acid. So in the case of acetic acid in this, uh, in this example, you have 0 0.00263 divided by 0 0.200 times 100%. And that will give you a percent ionization of 1.31. So if you dissolve a bunch of acetic acid in water, only 1.31% of it breaks apart into the ions. The rest of it is floating around as the whole molecule. You can do the same thing with the percent ionization of a base. A base is um, based on hydroxide, not acid. So there's one additional step. The first thing is when you're measuring pH, you're measuring the concentration of acid. Uh, they do have, or hydroxide probes do exist, but they're not very common. Typically, the pH is the number that would be used to measure all of these things because you can calculate the concentration of hydroxide. So in this example, a 0.200 molar solution of ammonia has a pH of 12.32. What is the percent ionization? So first, from a pH of 12.32, you can determine the pOH, which would be 14 minus 12.32. And that gives a pOH of 1.68. This is the, the measurement of the concentration of base. And this can be the specific concentration of base in moles per liter can still be determined by that same method. 10 raised to the power of negative one point, is a typo, negative 1.68 will give um, a concentration of 0 0.0209. This is, um, this is the concentration based on 1.68. The five is a typo. And when you do this, you have the concentration of hydroxide. So you know the concentration in moles per liter of the amount of OH minus. And for a base, the percent ionization is the concentration of hydroxide divided by the initial concentration of base, in this case, 0.2. So in this setup, the percent ionization of ammonia 
is 10.4%. Uh, only 10.4 of those ammonia molecules break apart into the separate ions of hydroxide and ammonium. So looking at these percent ionizations and figuring out what they are can give you a relative strength of an acid or a base. If something has 100% ionization or more than 100% in the case if uh, something has more than one H plus or OH minus, that would be a strong acid or a strong base. It breaks apart 100%. If something breaks apart less than 100%, such as these here, they would be considered weak. And that does not mean that it wouldn't burn or it wouldn't hurt. It just is the terms used to describe acids and bases, whether or not they break apart completely or not. And by using this percent ionization, you can see which weak acids or bases or are stronger than others based on how much of their H plus or OH minus breaks apart and is dissolved throughout the solution. So with, um, with these different percent ionizations, there, these are a list of strong acid and base examples. So hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, these are all strong acids sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide are weak, or I'm sorry, strong bases. Uh, examples of weak acids and bases would be acetic acid, phosphoric acid, benzoic acid, oxalic acid, or ammonium hydroxide. These are things that do not ionize 100%. The differences between a strong and a weak acid can be seen through the percent ionization of hydrochloric acid and acetic acid. Both the hydrochloric acid and the acetic acid are at concentrations of exactly 0.100 molar. With the accurate pH meter, when the pH of the hydrochloric acid solution is measured, the pH is near to one uh, pH units, or 1.01 pH, or even exactly one. However, when the pH meter is placed in the acetic acid, at the same overall concentration of 0 0.100, the resulting pH is now over 2. This is because acetic acid does not fully ionize. Therefore, there will be less of a concentration of H plus than the original solution. Based on the measurement of pH, you can determine the exact concentration of acid present in the acetic acid sample. And then dividing that by 0 0.100, you can obtain the percent ionization that occurs for acetic acid. In this virtual experiment, you're using two different simulations to look at the properties of acids and bases. You're going to be measuring um, pH and determining whether it's an acid or a base, looking at uh, the amount of acid present, converting into concentration of acid and concentration of base, 
looking at the percent ionization of things, um, seeing how dilutions play a role in them, and calculating uh, percent ionization, looking at strong and weak uh, acids and bases. So again, there are two different uh, simulations that you're going to go through. Uh, and in part A, this first simulation, you're using a pH meter here, which you can move into the solution to measure the concentration of a number of different, or measure the pH of a number of different substances. And for each one of these substances, you're looking, is it acidic, neutral, or basic? What is the concentration of H plus? What is the pOH of the solution? And then what is the concentration of base, OH minus? Then you're looking at how dilutions uh, play a role in this. And this could also be used for other types of solutions as well and looking at dilutions in general. You're going to see how it affects uh, both the moles and the, or the overall amount, as well as the overall concentration by either removing solution or adding water. How does that uh, play a role? What is actually going on with the molecules themselves? In the first part of the acid-base experiment, you will be looking at the pH and acid-base properties of different solutions. Selecting the macro simulation, you will be taken here. In the simulation, you will choose each solution and move the, the measurement device to the solution and record the pH. In the second step, you will then drain some solution out, recording the pH, and adding water and recording the pH again. From the pH, as well as the volume contained, you can determine how many moles of acid are contained for each solution. In this part of the experiment, you should be able to determine whether a solution is acidic, basic, or neutral based on its pH as well as determining the role that concentration plays in the pH value. So in, in the first part, you're recording the pH of each one of those solutions. And based on the pH reading or the pH level, you can determine whether it's acidic, neutral, or basic. Also from the pH, you can calculate the concentration of H plus and in the dilution aspects or the dilution um, parts, you can then use that concentration as well as the total volume of solution to determine the moles of the acid. Also from the pH measurement, you can determine the pOH by subtracting from uh, 14. And with the pOH, you can determine the concentration of hydroxide. How much base is there in that solution? So from this one measurement, one measurement of pH, there are different things that you can determine all from one single measurement. The second simulation, the second part of the experiment is looking specifically at strong and weak acids and bases. So you're looking at each individual uh, section, either strong acid, strong base, weak acid, weak base. And you're seeing how the concentration spe specifically and uniquely affects uh, the pH and what the specific relationship is between that. You're going to be measuring the pHs using this simulated pH paper 
and a pH meter, which you can select right here. You can also select uh, this light bulb, and that will give a level of brightness depending on the concentration of ions. So ions themselves can conduct electricity and that can connect a circuit, but whole molecules do not. Um, so depending on the level of ionization, the light bulb will become brighter and brighter if it's highly ionized. So in each of these situations, you're determining the percent ionization. You're basing that on the concentration, the initial concentration of the acid and base, and then the concentration of H plus and OH minus being calculated from the pH measurement. And using that, you're looking at the percent ionization and determining if things are either strong or weak uh, acids and bases. In the second part of the experiment, you will look at the properties of strong and weak acids and bases. You'll first select the My Solution simulation. Once in the simulation, you can adjust the concentration of the acid or base, adjust whether you are looking at an acid or a base, and you can adjust the strength of the acid, either strong or weak. You can move the pH meter into the solution to record the pH at the varying concentrations and strengths listed in the instructions. At one point, you will also be asked to look at pH paper and determine the pH of a solution by this method as well. In this part of the experiment, you should be able to determine the percent ionization, that is the amount of acid that breaks apart into its ions for both strong and weak acids and bases. So as far as the calculations in the second part of the reaction go, you're first just recording the, those initial concentrations. What are the concentrations of a strong acid, strong base, weak acid, weak base? And for each one of those, you're recording the pH. And with that pH number, you can obtain the concentration of both the H plus acid and the OH minus uh, base. Um, through these calculations here. You're looking at uh, recording the pH and converting the pH into concentration of H+, converting the pH into a pOH, and then converting that into a concentration of OH-. And with these concentrations of the specific ions, as well as the initial concentrations of the starting acid or base, you can determine the percent ionization in these different setups. Overall, when you're measuring the pH of a system or of a solution or something, you're measuring the concentration of acid. And that concentration of acid plays a critical role in a number of different chemical reactions. You can measure this acid either by more generic uh, ways like pH paper or pH indicator or by very precise ways using a pH meter. From that pH measurement, that one measurement, you can not only tell if a compound is an acid or a base, but you can also tell the specific concentration of acid in that uh, solution, as well as the specific concentration of base, the hydroxide ion that's present in that sample as well. 
when you go through uh, and measure these things, you can also predict if something is strong or weak based on the percent ionization, uh, based on how much initial concentration you have and how much of it is able to be measured by pH, you can, you can tell what percentage of the compound dissolves and breaks apart to generate the acid compound or acid ion of H+. And going through measuring these different uh, pH levels of these different types of solutions, you get a good understanding of different pH measurements, different acid and base concentrations, and a whole, uh, the whole concept between a strong and weak acid and base.